To use random finite sets, it is important to be familiar with a few different random finite set distributions and the properties and parameters of these distributions. The purpose here is to introduce a small number of random finite set distributions that are particularly important in multi-object tracking. In this video, we will start with one that you're already familiar with, namely the Poisson point process. If the random finite set X is a Poisson point process with intensity function lambda, its multi-object PDF evaluated for a set X is e to the power of minus the integral of the intensity function times a product over all the elements in the set X of the intensity function lambda evaluated for the different elements. As you can see, the first factor is merely a normalization and does not depend on the set X. We can use the definition of the Poisson rate, which is the integral over the intensity function, to express this multi-object PDF on a different form. If we denote the elements of the set as x1 to xn, the multi-object PDF is e to the power of minus the Poisson rate times the product over i from 1 to n of lambda of xi. By the way, you may recall that we derived an expression for Poisson point process densities when we presented clutter models for single object tracking. That expression was for an ordered density and resembled the expression presented here but contained a factor 1 divided by the cardinality of x factorial, that is, 1 divided by n factorial. The new expression is instead for a multi-object PDF. The fact that it does not contain a factor 1 divided by n factorial matches the relation between ordered PDFs and multi-object PDFs, mentioned in the video about multi-object PDFs. Poisson point processes are often used to model various different variables in multi-object tracking. For instance, we have already used it to model false detections and clutter detections, and it is the only model for this that we consider in this course. From now on, we also use it extensively to model the appearance of new objects in the prediction step. It is also commonly used to model the set of object measurements that we observe from an extended object, but we only touch upon this briefly in this course. In the previous video, we learned how to derive the cardinality PMF of a random finite set and used it to derive the cardinality PMF in a trivial example. Now that we are given the multi-object PDF of a Poisson point process, we can use it to derive its cardinality PMF. The probability that X contains n elements is 1 divided by n factorial times the integral over all sets with cardinality n. Plugging in the expression for the multi-object PDF, we obtain a factor e to the power of minus lambda bar that can be extracted out from the integral, and a product lambda of x1 times lambda of x2, and so on until lambda of xn. Now, since the integrand is a product of factors that only depend on one of the variables, xi, the joint integral can be written as a product over i from 1 to n of the integral over lambda of xi. Of course, the integral over lambda of xi is simply the Poisson rate lambda bar, and the product over these n integrals is therefore simply lambda bar to the power of n. We can identify the expression that we have arrived at as the PMF of a Poisson distributed random variable with mean lambda bar. This confirms that the cardinality of a Poisson point process is Poisson distributed and we have illustrated this probability mass function for lambda bar equal 3 in the figure to the right. You have actually already seen how to generate matrices such that the set of column vectors in the matrix becomes a Poisson point process. To generate samples from a random finite set, which is a Poisson point process, you can therefore use that algorithm and then collect the column vectors into a set. It is also possible to directly generate samples from the random finite set. First, we initialize the set as empty, and we then determine the number of elements in the set by generating a sample n from a Poisson distribution with mean lambda bar. Finally, we can generate n samples from the spatial PDF of the Poisson point process, and then store these samples in the set x using the union operator. For completeness, we can also visualize samples from a Poisson point process. To make things a bit more interesting, I have not assumed that the intensity function is constant within a certain area. Instead, I've assumed that it is a weighted sum of Gaussians. 
If you look at the function, you can see that the first term integrates to 4 and the second to 1, which means that the total integral is 5. The Poisson rate is therefore 5 in this example, which means that the expected number of detections is 5. If we normalize the intensity function, we obtain the spatial PDF, and we can see that the samples have an 80% probability of being Gaussian with mean 3,3, and a 20% probability of being Gaussian with mean minus 3,3. Minus 3. To generate a sample from this spatial distribution, we first randomly select which Gaussian density to draw our sample from, and then generate a sample from that Gaussian. Looking at samples from this Poisson point process, we can see that the number of elements varies significantly. As expected, we obtain more points in the circle centered around 3,3 than in the other circle. In difference to earlier visualizations, the points are not indexed, since we simply view them as elements in a set. Poisson point processes have a number of interesting properties, but I will end this presentation here since you have already seen this process before. By the way, we generally use the terms point processes and random finite sets interchangeably, and you may sometimes hear us say Poisson random finite set instead of Poisson point process.